first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. All right, all right, all right. Um, you're back once again with Dr. Aline Bay's show. And um, hopefully y'all can hear me clear out there. And tonight's discussion is going to be Major World Religions, Metaphysically Decoded Part 2. Last week we went over the information um, and we broadcast to you information that I'm sure you never heard before because it's not out anywhere except in my book, I'm Out of the Womb, Into the Mind. And um, we're going to get into more information. Like, for example, when you go to um, the Holy Bible, New Testament, Galatians, the fourth chapter, the 21st verse through the 26th verse, it breaks down how the Bible is allegory, all right? And it specifically goes into Abraham. It says, um, matter of fact, starts the 21st verse, it says, Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid and the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise in his states in the 24 verse, which things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Hagar or Igar. So it says to which these things are an allegory. So the story of Abraham, the story of him having the two wives of Sarah and Hagar, and them having the sons, Isaac and Ishmael, um, and Ishmael was born of Hagar and Abraham, according to the story, and Isaac was born of Sarah and Abraham. Now, we know that Abraham's name was, Bra- was um, Abram, and Sarah's name was Sarai. Now, that happened to be the same deities in the Sanskrit teachings of Brahma and Saraswati. So you have the same traditions in the Hindu Kushite tradition, because the Kushites are the originators of these stories. And they came from out of Ethiopia, as we call it, or Somalia, now as it, now, as it is now named. And, of course, we know that the Egyptians was a, was a colony of the Ethiopians, Kushites, um, Nubians, um, 
you know, or New Opians, as we say, Nubians. And they came up from out of the interior of um, what is called the moon, all right, uh, what is called the Oladori Gorge, um, Lake Victoria region of Uganda and Tanzania, near Kenya, going up into Ethiopia. And that's where they said that the oldest man um, has been found. That is the originator. Uh, that is the original place of the oldest fossils that have been yet found. Um, one of the oldest fossils is Dagnesh, or Dagnesh, um, in which that is called Lucy, in which that was found by um, Louis B. Leakey and Richard Leakey. Um, you know, um, in the 1950s, they leaked it out, in which that showed that um, Africans were the oldest species upon planet Earth. They are the original inhabitants of the planet. Now, that's the oldest fossil. We got items that's much older than that. Um, of course, you heard Oswald Quasi speak about that Ganesh if you ever watched any of his videos. However, if you get Forbidden Archaeology by Michael Creedmoor and Richard Thompson, they go into the fact of um, humanoids, human beings being on this planet more than 2.8 billion years ago. All right, so um, we know that man has been on this planet longer than thousands of years. According to your Bible, it says that Adam was made on the sixth day, and a day unto the Lord is a thousand years. So, therefore, they equated that Adam was made 6,000 years ago, so they gave that um, hypothesis, you know, that that's what that was equal to. However, that is a metaphysical code in which that we have to decode now because the sixth day that Adam was made on is actually talking about the sixth element on the periodical chart, which is carbon. Adam was um um is actually an atom, A T O M instead of A D A M, in which that symbolizes um blood. Because that's what Adam Adam means within Hebrew it means blood. Right? And that blood is talking about the origin of life. That's what it's talking about, life itself. And the component of life is carbon. And carbon is the sixth element on the periodical chart. So Adam is made on the sixth day. Carbon is the sixth element. And it happens to have six protons, six electrons, six neutrons. So here in the book of Revelation, it speaks about the number of man. And the person who has this wisdom to be able to decode this story or information concerning the beats which number is 666. That is the code for man. Man was made on the sixth day. Matter of fact, Muslims, Christians, and Jews, monotheistic belief system to this day, still think that man was created on the sixth day, in which that would be symbolically Friday. All right? Saturday being the seventh day, which is the um, Sabbath, the day of rest. Now, when we get more into that you know that Abraham is the said father. All right, he's the said father of um of Judaism, Christianity and Islam. All right. Um Abraham is supposed to came from his lineage, Moses, as the father of the five books in the Old Testament called the Pentateuch. Um, as well as also um, David, Solomon, and from David, 33 generations up would be Jesus. All right? And which that Christianity was formed on. So Judaism, Christianity was formed through that bloodline. And then, of course, um, that was supposedly from the seed of Judah, which is um, who um, was through Isis, Isaac, in which that was through Abraham. All right, so you have Abraham, Isaac, um, Jacob, who actually came to Israel, his 12 sons. Um, of course, everyone came through that line of Abraham and Sarah. Now, the firstborn, however, of Abraham was Ishmael. And so, hence, Muhammad and the Arabs claimed lineage through that. Now, all of this is allegorical, and they have us fighting for hundreds and thousands of years based on these allegories in which that they um, put together instead of explaining it. And so these wars in which that we have is based off of that, as well as also resources 
or you gold, minerals, etc. Now, Abraham did not physically exist because it's an allegory. We're going to get into the definition in a second. But let's go to the Holy Quran, Surah 3, Ayat 6. And it says, He, it is who has revealed the book to thee. Some of his verses are decisive, but they are the basics of the book. And others are allegorical. Those, and then those in whose heart is perversity follows the part of it which is allegory, seeking to mislead and seeking to give it, give it their own interpretation. This is the problem going on now. We got Negroes, you know, um, these um, Pastor Red, Reverend Polk Chop, and the rest of them, bougie um, behind Negroes, as well as um, um, ignorant, you know, people and persons that are trying to give the scriptures their own interpretation when portions of it is allegorical and they don't tell us what portions are allegorical. And so it says, it says, and others are allegorical. Then those in whose heart is perversity follows the parts which are allegorical. So they follow the allegorical parts, which is supposed to be um, metaphysically decoded, and they seek to mislead. And most of you have gone through that, gone through that, of being misled. And seeking, because they seek to give it their own interpretation. And it says, no one knows this interpretation except a law. And those firmly rooted in knowledge. So you can know the allegorical parts, but you must have knowledge. And so this is what we're going to bring to you tonight. So they say, we believe in it. It is all from our Lord, and none do mine except men of understanding. All right? So that is the key. And then you go to uh, Marion Webster Dictionary. And look up the word allegory, and it means the expression by means of symbolic, fictional characters, figures, and actions of truths or generalization about human existence, also as incident as in a story or painting or such expression, a symbolic representation. That is the, that is the meaning of the word allegory. Now, the Holy Quran thinks that portions of it is allegory, the Bible Thinks that is allegory, specifically Abraham. And so, if Abraham is the um, progenitor of the monotheistic belief system of Christianity, Islam, Judaism, then they are basing their whole existence on fictional characters and trying to explain it to you as historical. And they have anthropomorphized the science of the soul into human form and characteristics. That's what this symbolizes. Because Brahma. Um, Brahma was in a cave. Jesus was born in um, a cave according to the Apocrypha, which is referred to within the Bible as a manger. That is talking about the third ventricle of the brain, in which that the pineal gland overlooks the third ventricle of the brain, and inside of the pineal gland, according to Descartes, who's a, um, a French philosopher, he states that the soul was embedded inside of the pineal gland. And according to all reports, we all have come to that realization um, based on the teachings of um of great teachers, Dr. Richard King, Brother Bobby Emmett, um, myself, and others who have brought you all that information specifically about the science of the um, soul embedded inside of the pineal gland, and not just that, but also how to activate it. Now, this is what all this symbolizes. So when we go into um, the symbolic, fictional characters or figures that's what it says in the definition, allegory. So, therefore, if Abraham, the father of, supposed father of Judaism, Christianity, Islam, did not actually exist in human form, and neither did his sons Isaac and Ishmael, you know, for they were symbolic, fictional figures, then the so-called monotheistic belief system of Judaism, which is the Holy Quran, I mean the Holy Torah, excuse me, Christianity, the um, Holy Bible, and Islam, the Holy Quran, or portionately allegorical in teaching and not just literal. So as we are led to believe by so-called religious heads, so therefore all three so-called monotheistic belief systems or religions are derived from the ancient African spiritual systems. Ethiopia, which of course is Kush, also called Abyssinia. Um, all of that is where this information originated from um, on up into Egypt. So when you break down like, for example, the word Holy Torah. The word Torah is a corruption of the word Daura. Um, Dao, T-U-A, which is an ancient Egyptian word, 
is the same word that they use within the Orient is Tao, T-A-O, which means the way, all right? So the Torah is a corruption of the word Tao Ra, which means to worship or adoration of Ra. And that is talking about you gathering the electromagnetic forces because 300,000 tons of stardust energy falls to the planet Earth daily, and you as a melanated being are supposed to absorb, absorb um, your share of this energy as it comes down. Quantum physicists, this is no coincidence that quantum physicists has found out and studied the human anatomy and states that the body is composed of stardust particles. Well, if 300,000 tons of stardust energy or particles fall to the planet of daily and your body is composed of that, then obviously by you gathering more of it, it enhances your health, it creates longevity, and it even promotes immortality. So this, these are the teeth. And so this is what um, Dao Ra, which the word Tor actually means, and it breaks down to that. When you read about Noah's 40 days and 40 nights, what that actually is talking about that if you study Qigong and you learn how to bring energy down into your Dan Tien, and there's three Dan Tien. You have your lower Dan Tien, which is your navel chakra, your heart um, chakra, which is your mid Dan Tien, um, which is called um, Dan Tien translates to English word heavens. All right, so you have your lower heaven, your um, mid heaven, and your upper Dan Tien, which is referred to in the Bible as the upper room, is your third eye area. Now, you can collect energy and store the energy into those particular areas of the body, and it will promote longevity, health, as well as also immortality. So 40 days and 40 nights symbolizes that once you learn how to practice these techniques for those 40 days and 40 nights and flood, all right, remember Noah and the flood, the word Noah comes from the word nos, which is a um, Greek word, which means the mind. So you have to learn how to flood the mind with this prana energy, the flood. All right, this is why it was symbolic to the fact of the two animals, taking two animals or seven animals, um, onto the ship. The ship, the arc, symbolizes the navel chakra, all right, and also the arcing of the head, which is the top, the boat, the, the boat of Ra, the top of the head. So by you bring energy into the third eye, bring energy into um, the genitalia area, or better yet, I should say, um, the reproductive chakra, which is your second chakra, which is your navel chakra, what happens is, is that you expand your life force as well as also your mind, your intelligence, your in other words, your states of consciousness. So the story of Noah is about learning how to do that, all right, to create giants, Nephilim, which means mental giants. This is how you produce and become a mental giant is what this is talking about, all right? Once again, it's not just allegory. You know, you think about giants walk the earth. Yes, giants walk the earth, we even grew to as high as 36 feet tall at one time um, before, um, um, before the times of the dinosaurs. And then we shrunk to the size of the Twa people, which is only about four feet tall or so. And um, some are propelling towards um, seven feet and taller, you know, as we're still finding giants today, and we have measured up to 36 to 25 to 12 feet to eight feet tall, all right? So these are the giants of the land, but these was us. This was us, all right? With less people on the planet Earth, we was taller. More people on the planet Earth, we got smaller. Based on the annihilation of um, the dinosaurs, um, which supposedly came through a bombardment of meteorites that cut down on the oxygen level content in the air, in which that went from 35% oxygen content to less than 21% oxygen content. So because we didn't have enough oxygen, well, the oxygen wasn't as plentiful as it was before we shrunk in size. This is science. I'm not coming with no bullshit, no fucking damn stories, no goddamn um, mythologies. We're going to decode all of this. But I'm tired of the bullshit. I'm tired of the ignorance that our people are displaying caught up into white Jesus and all this other bullshit that is going on. So we're not going to be dealing with none of that. You know, we're going to know what's really going on. So the word Torah also phonetically sounds like the word Tarak, all right? And as, in other words, as the Torah cards and the word Tarak, all right, means the Lord of the four directions. And that symbolizes air, fire, water, and earth. And when all four of them elements are combined, it forms ether, the one. 
All right, so the four books of Moses plus the one symbolizes ether, air, fire, water, earth, ether. So each book symbolizes one of those aspects of the first five books of Moses, which is the Terah, uh, which is Terah. All right, so you also know that's what that symbolizes. As a matter of fact, the word Terah is also derived from the Hispanic word, the great mother, the goddess, all right, of um, she was of childbirth and the protector of women and children. All right, her name was Terorat. Terorat. All right, it's Tarat, which means the great one. And she was the lady of magical protection who guided the souls into the afterlife. All right, that's what that symbolized. So in ancient Kemet, Egypt, or Tamaria, or Tamaray, it was based on astrology. As a matter of fact, when you go and look at the, um, go to the Temple of Dendera, you will find, um, which is the Temple of um, Het Heru, you would go to the um, center and you would see the Dendera, which is the zodiac above. Well, the central, the so-called North Pole actually used to be Thuban, which was part of the Draco constellation, in which that symbolized Tarot all right, and we can depicted on the ceiling of the um, constellation in the tomb um, um, of Het Heru, which is the temple of, um, also called the Temple of Dendera. So she was shown to represent the never sitting um, Circumpolar star of Ursa Minor and the Draco North Pole star Thuban, which is the word Thieves, but Thieves um, later on, in the Draco constellation. All right, so the seven stars lined um, lined up down her back as the stars of the Little Dipper. So those seven stars symbolizes the seven stars down your spinal column, symbolic to um, the Kundalini energy um, and the chakra system. All right, and this is also found of the um, Terarat, um, Sebek, which is Thuban Draco, and it's found at the um, Temple of Seti One also. All right, so when you get into the word Holy Bible, let's break that down. Um, the word holy is derived from the Greek word helios or heroes or the word heroes or hero, which is the word hero. So, you know, we know who hero was. Hero is Horus. All right, and then the Latin word halo or haru or haru. Right now, you got to remember that the R's and the L's are interchangeable. Whenever you look at the word helios and halo, interchange the R's and the L's. And you put the R instead of the L's, and you have the word, instead of halo, you have the word haru. And instead of helios, you have the word har- harios, which is the word harps. So this is what the word holy actually is derived from. So the word holy means sun. A light, which is in reference to um, um, Heru, which is a form of Ra, or saw his father. For he and his father are one. Jesus and his father are one. When I see you, I see the father. When you see me, you see the father. Father and son are one. That's what that is symbolic to. All right? That's why it's an S-U-N. And, of course, um, those who are made in the image and after the likeness of God is the S-O-N. All right? And we're not talking about gender. We're talking about the mind because when you break down um, the word holy, light, and sun, it also is equivalent to the word mind. All right? Then you have the word Bible, which is derived from the Latin word um, Biblos, all right, which is from papyrus. All right? In the early Greek, the word papyrus stems from the Tamarian or the um, ancient Metronetra word, which is papyra, which is the English transliteration of the word paper. The word paper rot is just is simply the word paper with an A added on it. So hence the Holy Bible is the word raw papyrus or raw paper rot, which is the book of the rising like Ra. That's what it means, the book of rising like Ra. And the overthrown of Apep, which is actually what is called the book of coming forth by day and night or the Parham Heru suit text. 
That's what that all equivalent and what that comes out to. So um, when we talking about the Holy Bible, simply say, oh, yeah, raw papyrus or raw paper raw. Yeah, the sun, the sun book. That's what that means. When you get to the Holy Quran, well, the word ku um, is the ancient Sumerian word for illumination, intelligence, wisdom, um, aspects of the spirit. The ancestral spirits are called the aku, or the intelligence, or the shining illuminated ones. All right? The word that represents divine wisdom is tahuti, or jahuti, you know, and it's a derivative, or basically from ku, which is intelligent wisdom. And it's the bird connection of the God of Wisdom, Tahuti. So you have the word Kura, um, which is the wisdom of Ra. This is the um, reason Muslims refer to the Quran, Kura, as the Book of Wisdom. Tahuti is the record keeper. This is why Muslims say Assalamu alaikum to the or Rakhmatullah to the to the to the right, and then turn to the left and say Assalamu alaikum Rakhmatullah to the You know, it's because they're speaking to those. To, to that good angel on the right and that bad um, demon or devil on the on the um, left. It's the same thing with the cartoon um, back in the days when you see um, someone is having mischievous thought and they're trying to um, not do bad things and um, you see the angel pop up on the right side and then the devil pop up on the left side. And then that battle between lower self and higher self commits. That's what that is all symbolic to. So um, this is the reason why the Muslims refer to the Quran as the Book of Wisdom. And Tahuti is the record keeper, hence the father of time, in which he becomes later on the Roman deity Kronos, which means timekeeper. The Vatican wanted to make a new religion, so what they did was um, to, um, to, to take over Jerusalem and to challenge the so-called Jewish uh, faction. And thus the Roman deity Kronos became the name of the Holy Book, the Holy Quran. Or the Sun Chronicles. Or originally it's mentioned as about is Kura, the wisdom of Ra. And it was a collection of the Ra paper Ra, or the books of the rising like Ra. In other words, the Holy Quran um is seventy three percent of the Bible, like we said last week. The other twenty seven percent comes from the Zoroastrian text. It's called the Ardavan Veda or Vesta. Um, as well as the Lost Books of the Bible, Forgotten Books of Eden, and the Apocrypha. All right? As a matter of fact, if we go to um, the Lost Found Muslim Lessons, number um, two, which is one through 40, which is the final term examination assessment of um, Mr. Elijah Muhammad, it says, um, um, Master Muhammad um, asked the question, who made the Holy Quran or Bible and how long ago? Um, will you tell us why does Islam renew our history every 25,000 years? Then Elijah Muhammad came back and answered. He said the Holy Quran or Bible is made by the original people. Who is Allah, the supreme being or black man of Asia? The Quran will expire in the year 25,000. The nation of Islam is all wise and does everything right and exact. The um, the planet Earth, which is the home of Islam, and is approximately 25,000 miles in circumference. So the wise man of the East, black man, made history or Quran to equal his home um, circumference, a year to each or every mile. And thus, every time his history lasts, 25,000 years, he renews it for another 25,000 years. All right, now you got to understand what that means. Real simple. Um, the planet Earth goes around the star constellation series A, series B, every 25,000 years. Or 25,928 years to be right and exact. As well as also at the same time as the Earth. And this solar system is going around series A and series B, the constellation, also or what is called Ziggy Tolo, Polo Tolo, and Emiya, you know, um, series A, series B, series C, and some say even series D. Um, as they go around each other, um, they also go through the 12 zodiac signs at the same time, which would be equivalent to 25,000 years also, or 25,928 years. 
So what is going on is that we are now approaching, supposedly, allegedly, this year, a new 25,000 year renewal of history. And we are leaving, and we are leaving on the last past years of the 25,000 year of history, along with the um, last um, period of the Piscean Age, which was 2,160 years um, in length. All right, and we're moving into a new age. All right, which is 2,160 years of what is known as Aquarius. So we're moving from um, the 12th house into the 11th house. Right, and so it symbolizes that um, on 25,000 years of renewal of history coming up, and we are the bearers of this new information. This is why it's so much about locking your DNA down with genetic mono um, uh, modified organisms, or what's called GMOs, or genetically altered food, or Franken foods, um, chemtrails to block the um, um, with the main component of aluminum to block out the the rays of the sun to keep your melanin from um, mutating. And I'm back with the ten strands of DNA in which that in the Old Testament it says that God cast out of his sight. If you go to the book of Kings, first and second book of Kings, it says that God cast out of his sight the ten tribes of Israel and only left two, which was Judah and, um, and Dan. Well, by the time you get to the New Testament, you know, in the book of Revelation, well, all 12 strands are back, all 12 tribes are back. So those 12 wives, the 12 tribes, symbolizes that renewed of history coming back. So this is why there's such so much of an awareness and consciousness leap now, a quantum leap, a metaphysical leap, all right, um, into this information because we are going into a new age and our consciousness is um is a coagulating to that new information, is adapting to that new information in which that is here. And so they are trying their best to keep us from graduating um from the third dimension into the fifth dimension. Because right now um, we're going through what's called the dark rift, and we're going to come out on the other side of the photon belt, and which that symbolizes the light, photon Ra. All right, so hence the sun now is casting off more um, corona mass ejections or CMEs, which is called solar flare activity. And this is why um, here in the south we haven't had a winter. Um, we had one cool day or cold day so far. Um, right now, today, it was over 70-some-odd degrees, you know, um, and feeling warm, like it's already springtime, you know, and it's been like that now for the last, for the whole winter here in North Carolina, specifically, you know. And so um, every time that these corona mass ejections from the planet Earth, there is, the Earth heats up. That's what they refer to as the greenhouse effect or um, or the um, or what they refer to also as um, not just the greenhouse effect, um, global warming, as they also refer to it as. So this is what is going on, you know. So um, we have to be conscious of these types of things. All right, so let's get back into the fictional characters um, of the Bible and what they actually um, stand for and what they actually mean. All right, um, when we look at the word Elohim, all right, we know that it stands for the word Elo. Well, the letters R and L, once again, is interchangeable. So, um Ela, which is Allah, which is Allah, which is Allahumma, which is Hallelujah, you know, um, all of that stems from um, L, and L is the word Ra. Remember the L's and the R's are interchangeable. So E R, which is E L, becomes R E. All right, and so L and Ra actually are one and the same. So Ra, as we know, symbolizes your soul, the old one, the ancient one. That's the return of the ancient one is, is the enlightenment of your soul, all right? Right now, your soul expands the whole 76 quintillion mile diameter of the universe. Your soul is the universe in miniature form, incarcerated, um, or in, to, in the physical body. That's what this symbolizes. So upon awakening, you awaken to the universal knowledge of oneself and all and of and of all things in existence. All right? Now, when you look at the word Yahweh, or which is Yahuwah or Yahweh, which is now Yahweh is one of the major titles of Tahuti, which is the God symbolized the God of wisdom. His name was Ayah, or Yah, which becomes the word Jah, which is short for Jehovah. 
right? So he was called Ayahuhi. Ayahuhi, right? And Hui turned backwards, or I H U H, or Yahivai, which are the four sacred letters of the Tetragrammaton of the name of God. So in this form, he was symbolized as the crescent moon, which is the, that's what the word Aha means, the crescent moon. So um, that was the symbol. So Tahuti often seen as the image as the Ibis bird or the crane-headed bird, and Ibis um, was called Habu, or Habiu, or Habui, all right? And in the ancient Tamami word, Habui is pronounced um, Habuwa, all right? So Hawa, Hawa was corrupted into Hawa, all right? So the name Yahuwa or Yahawa is actually um, is what that name stems from. Now, if you take your two fingers and place them in your ears and listen to your heartbeat, you actually will hear that same sound. Hua, Yahua, 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 Yahua. That is the heartbeat. And there's no coincidence that the um, Tetragrammaton has four um, has four letters. Yahi Vahi. That symbolizes the four chambers of the heart also, as well as the four elements. All right, so this is what this symbolizes. So when, um, you know, we're talking about God. So this is why when you read um, 1 Corinthians, no, the, 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, the 16th the, um, 16 verse, do you not know that the, your body is the temple of God? You know, and, of course, Luke seventeen twenty one. For neither look here nor there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. We're telling you exactly where this kingdom is, where it dwells at, the heart and the mind. All right? So, when you get into the word Hebrew, the important thing to remember is that the title of Tahuti um, was corrupted from Haprihu, Haprihu, and Haprihu, or Uprihu, um, you know, became, you know, the word Hebrew, all right? And Hebrew became the word Hebrew. Now, when you look at the word Hebrew, is um, Tahuti and Hiru is tied together, all right? Matter of fact, they're one and the same. And Hiru, Heb Hiru, Heb means priest. Hiru means light. So when Heb Hiru becomes the word Hebrew also, so it means a priest of light. And that has to be also another title of Tahuti, all right? So, of course, there's no person named Eber for whom the Hebrews are descended. Eber is a fictional character because there's a corruption of the word Aprihu, you know, where the word Hebrew comes from. But I'm telling you what the word Hebrew means uh, within the ancient Kemetic or Metaneta, um, it's talking about Hapiru, which is the priest of light. So you or anyone who reached a level of enlightenment becomes a priest of light become, um, because that is your soul awakening. See, when our set, which is the Kundalini energy, raises up the spine and it awakens our saw who is asleep in the pineal gland, the soul is half asleep. It's like the Kundalini is half asleep at the base. The Kundalini symbolizes our set, which is also Sekhmat, which is also Shekinah. And when it awakens, it raises up the spine, the jiji, the backbone of Osiris, the spinal column, the 33 vertebrates, since Jesus died on the cross, the 33. And when it comes up, it awakens within the brain at the pineal gland area, the soul. So our soul, who was half asleep, which is the soul asleep, now becomes awakened. So hence, our soul transforms into his rule, the awakened one. All right, this is what is going on. So hence, Jesus ascended to his Father, who art in heaven, to sit on the right side or the right hand side of his Father, who art in heaven. That's what this all symbolizes. That's come up the right. That come up the activation of the right hemisphere of the brain through the raising up of Kundalini energy to the middle brain section. So hence, giving you uh, the ninety percent of um, usage of the brain in which that um, you did not have um, before. Because the average person only uses about 10% of their brain. 
Most use less than that now with the dumbing down of America. Now, when you get the word Jew, um, the title Jew is really a misnomer, right? Because Judah is actually a corruption of the title Jehudi, right? So it is this corruption that was used to create the title Judah, all right? And Jesus being the, um, from the tribe of Judah. So the word Jew is actually the word Jehudi. That's where it comes from. If you spell the D, J E W H U T I or T Y, the word Jew is embedded inside of it. All right, so um, this is where the words come from. It's the origin of all of this. All right, something in which that um, very few speak about. You know, when you get into um, Moses, because you have aspect of Moses symbolizes Sargon the first, as well as also Akhenaten who was Amenhotep the fourth. But even further back within the history of um the Assyrian, um, as well as also the Egyptian mythology, the word Moses or Moshi, um, some say is derived from Mesh. All right? And Moses is a fictional character once again. However, the life of this fictional character was patterned after the knowledge of the god Tahuti once again. All right? Now, the word Moshe, when you look up the story of Sargon the first and his who was actually the story of a child being sent up the river and picked up by um, royalty, um, that, um, that story with, uh, existed within the Assyrian mythology of Zargon the first a thousand years before the Moses story was put together. And that story comes from out of ancient Egypt in which that symbolizes the production of semen. The sea man, the sperm in the physical body, and it's moving up through the spinal column, which symbolizes the Nile River, to the kingdom of God, the royalty, the kingdom, all right, which is the head, the pineal gland. That's what that symbolizes. All right. Um, the title, the function, the name of Makuru. All right, is the origin of the corruption the name Moshe? All right, Makuru, which is the name for Tahuti, um, you know, uh, and Makuru became um, Mashir, a Mashir, a Moshe. All right, which the word Moshe or Moses, as in Thutmoses. Thutmoses the third also played a part in um, this story. So, yeah. But Moses the third, Dargon the first, Akhenaten, all stories told over from a rendition of the older story of Tahuti. And they cast themselves also within those positions, um, and those stories were taken from them. For example, the Book of Psalms uh, 104 is identical to Akhenaten hymns. All right? And we know about Moses and the ten. Commandments, we know that comes from the 42 laws of Mayat, um, out of the 40, 147 confessions, negative confessions as they are called. All right? Now, if you get George C. James' book, he states that the title Moshe, or Moses, was a title given to initiates all over Kemet, and that the reality um, is rooted in the fact that it's one who achieves a certain level of development in this life and after death that was given the title of um, Mashi. Right? In the book of the Cow to Heaven, the destruction of man, Ra asked Tahuti to come with me to the mountainous region where man and woman could not see them. That's Ra and Tahuti. This is why that is symbolized. That's why Ra and Tahuti symbolizes the right and the left eye. And man cannot see them because they was third eye blind. If their third eye was open, then they would be able to see Ra and tell who he would symbolize the left and right eye. So Ra takes on the form of a god of light and is thus called Ra Akohu. Tahuti, which is um, Mashi or Mushi, goes to the mountains, um, area or region to see the god of light, symbolizing the burning bush also. All right, so Ra directs Tahuti to write down what is in the spirit world. Tahuti is given the title on Mayat, or the scribe of the divine law. Hence, his wife is Mayat. All right, so Tahuti is instructed to become the lawgiver. 
the Ten Commandments is, the, is the inscribed in the stone. Ra makes Tahuti his deputy on earth. Hence, this is where the story of Gabriel, because Tahuti also symbolizes Gad, with, um, and in the um, Old Testament, it becomes the angel Gabriel, the archangel Gabriel, becomes the messenger of, of um, the messenger of God. And Tahuti is given an assistant, and the assistant is the divine baboon called Anan. All right? And, of course, Anan becomes corrupted, becomes Aaron, which becomes Aaron. All right? This is what is going on, you know? So now you have Moses and Aaron, you know, going before the Pharaoh. All right? That's what's going on. So y'all have to understand it. You get to the fictional character David, or Dawid, or Dawu. Um, DWU, or D, excuse me, DWD, um, become, is, is that taken from Tahuti again? T U T, which is Tut. All right, so, um, you know, when you're dealing with um, Tahuti, um, his name is Tuti, T H U T I. All right? In which that becomes tight, T U T U T. All right, so Tahuti, um, you know, becomes Jehuti. You become Tahuti, you know, a Jehuti, a Dao, in which that um, Dao, you know, was corrupted to the word Dawood. All right, uh, um, in the Arabic, and the equivalent of the um, Hebrew is Dawid, and the English is David. But this is the character of Tahuti. You have Abraham, and we spoke about it a little bit earlier. But Abraham also symbolizes a title. You have to understand that Tahuti had over 50 names. And these characters of the Bible symbolize these particular titles of Tahuti an aspect of consciousness, an aspect of wisdom, which also symbolizes your particular organs in your body and particular glands and hormonal functions. All right, so Abraham symbolizes also um, Tahuti. All right, a form of Tahuti. Abraham, um, Abraham um, which is one of his names, Tahuti, once again, is the representative of Abraham and Abraham. All right, and we know that Abraham. Um, is the ancient comedic name of um we know that's an Egyptian name or comedic name anyway. Ab means father, Ra, son, light, and then Ham, which means black. So um the father of um the black light. Right, symbolically. That could be also um, you know, what that symbolizes based on those three words or actually ancient Egyptian words or ancient comedic words and we said break down to that. So what is that? That's the mantra of melanin. Your pineal gland is your father who art in heaven, which is the highest endocrine gland in your body, which sits near the top of the head, which is in the shape of the pine which is in the shape of a pine cone. It is also in the shape of the head of the penis. So hence it's called pineal, just like your penis um head, um brothers, as well as also the one on her clitoris, is the pineal gland. On the woman, it's the clitoris, or the clitoris. But that's what that is. That's is why, they, like we said last week, um, why they locked the brothers up behind the penal system. And the sisters, you know, the brothers and sisters up in behind the penal system. So that symbolizes the four walls of classification. Just like they're locked up inside of them because they don't have sufficient amount of melanin. And because of that jealousy, they can't utilize the melanin in the melanocytes you know, and because we made them only for a specific time period, 6,000 years, according to Elijah Muhammad and Asra Muhammad and um, teachings coming out from the um, from the Adept Chamber of the Moore Science Temple of America slash Moore's Holy Temple of Science slash Moore's Divine National Movement of the World. So this is where this information comes from. Then you have um, Isaac and Ishmael, once again, fictional characters that symbolize this hero and sect. Um, the Cain and Abel story symbolizes that. Um, Hebrew and Set, um, Inky and Elil, you know, the same story. Judas, 
and Jesus in the New Testament symbolizes the same story. The story is told over and over again. And, of course, it ruins self symbolizes the higher self and set the lower self. That's what that symbolizes. So the top three chakras and the lower three chakras with the meeting in the middle, which is the seventh chakra, which symbolizes, um, in the sense of the meaning, um, the um, heart center, which deals with conditional love. You know, but the, um, specifically the three lower ones, this was less greed and jealousy. And then, of course, even um, the heart itself, envy, hatred, um, can also be there. All right? So you're dealing with the lower emotions. And then once you're inside your higher body, which is the three higher bodies, which is your three higher chakras, that is your immortal body. The other three or four, based on the condition of your consciousness, dies along with the physical body and it goes back to what is called the realm of form. The three higher ones is what um, continues on after the death of the physical body, which is um, called your um, aku or ku, um, your ka and your ba, which is talking about your um, glorified light body, symbolizes the throat chakra. Um, the ka symbolizes the pituitary gland information, as well as also um, the pineal gland with the soul symbolized as the um, ba. All right, so the um, pituitary gland symbolizes the spirit. So this is what we're talking about, the glorified light body, so light, um, spirit, and soul is what survives the death of the physical body. And this is what this play is with um, Isaac Ishmael and this information being told over and over again throughout the various stories. All right, um, Sema Or is what becomes Ishmael, all right? Um, and then, of course, um, Isaac is from the word um, Shaq or Shik or Heck, all right, and becomes Isaac, but that is a form of Hebrew, all right? So Sema Ur is a form of um, Ishmael that symbolizes um, Set. So this is what this is talking about. So the entire story of the Holy Spirit, which is the um, Holy Ghost, um, the Christ Jesus, um, the Father, you know, all of that comes from us, saw, or set, and he ruled. You know, even the etymology of the name Jesus, which is Yahshua, you know, the word Shu is derived actually from um, the firstborn son or the first begotten son of, of Atum. And he was known as the personification of air. So Shu symbolized um, air, the breath of life. When you sneeze, you say, yes, Shu. So you call it on the name of Jesus every time you sneeze. And you're not talking about Jesus in the sense of this white man. You're talking about the essence. You're talking about the breath of life, what you call on every time you sneeze. There's no coincidence that you say, Yeshua. When you sneeze, which happened to be the name of Jesus in Hebrew, but they was giving you a clue that this symbolizes the breath of life. That's the Jesus that you should be um, um, working on and manifesting, not some white man coming out the sky or thinking that a black man is going to return um, to help you either. These are fictional characters. There was no um, um, anthropomorphized characters in this. It is your um, breath in which that leads you to salvation, which is the activation of your soul principle. It is through the breath of life. That's what it meant by Jesus said that um, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father but by me. You're talking about through the breath. You can't get to um, the soul, to awaken the soul, unless you learn how to master the signs of breath. That's what this is talking about. So, you know, I just sit back and watch all these um, so called, you know, um, teachers. You know, try to teach this information, and you still have your niggas caught up into these fucking mythologies. You know, instead of teaching you what the symbolic, what the symbolism really means, as far as it relates to the physical body. You know, these motherfuckers are jokes, and y'all getting joked and clowned right along with them listening to them. This is a real serious problem going on out here. You know, niggas debating on Islam against Christianity against Judaism. Well, I'll let y'all have that shit. For those that's ready to roll to the next level of consciousness, it's 2012. I can't fuck around with y'all niggas no more. When y'all ready to damn come into higher consciousness, come on. 
and do it. Learn the science of breath. Learn the science of alternative healing. Learn the science of prana, qigong, tai chi, reiki, pranayama. Learn the tiger sciences. Learn how to damn use the whole world as your energy source. Not just cutting up animals and shit. Not having goddamn blood sacrifices. Animal or human or otherwise. Some of you niggas waiting on goddamn UFOs to come out the sky to save your monkey asses. Well, if you ain't damn enlightened enough and if you're not light enough physically through your molecular system and your molecules, as we would say, through your molecular structure, then you're not going to be able to go into any ship anyway. And the only way you can do that and achieve that is through the science of breath. Get your book by Yogi Rama Chakra, The Science of Breath. Learn this shit. I know I'm doing a lot of cursing tonight, but um, I'm tired of the foolishness. Seriously. You know, it's the town, you know, you can't, you know, more hoodwinking. You know, now you have Solomon, a fictional character, another one. You know, Solomon, Sheba, Menelik, all fictions. The allegories. Stories based on all saw set in your rule. In their stellar aspects. Dealing with the stars. All saw in the sky is called Sa in Kimmy or Tamaray. That's the Orion constellation, which means Orion means Orion or Uranus, which means heaven. Which all saw is called All saw Sa. And the title of his is Hari Mat. Hari which is the word as they use within um, Heidi Krishna, within the um, Hindu Kush, or the Indians from out of India, same deity. Hari means he who is above, a chief, leader, king. Ma means north, northern territory, symbolizes the crown chakra, the king dome, once again. So Hari Ma means the king of the chiefs of the northern territory, or the northern, or the northern region. Right? That's where he was resurrected and made his entrance into the heavenly realm, which is um, as above, so below, as within, so without. That becomes the constellation of Orion. The function is God in nature. All right? Then, of course, like I said, Sheba and Menelik, once again, fictional captives, are set takes up her residence in Star Constellation, the Prophet, which is serious. If you go to um, the Holy Quran, the 53rd chapter, or Surah, the Pacific speaks about what is called the chapter of Nijem. Nijem means the star. And you will see where it says the Lord God Almighty or the Almighty God or Allah, the Mighty God is the Lord of the star Sirius. It says it right there in the Holy Quran in the 53rd chapter. And that symbolizes our set, the mother goddess principle. And our set is also called the great provider. She's the queen of the star system, Sirius. And um, Sepat is corrupted into Sabat, Sheba, Saba. This is where this comes from. All right? Now, when you get into... Because well, I'm saying all this because, you know, a lot of people rather deal with fiction and deal with, you know, mythology without the explanation of, it, of the symbology. And we can't deal with that no longer. All right, Menelik, which means the son of the wise one, symbolic to Solomon, of course. Um, of course, that symbolizes another form of um, Tahuti. Right, that comes from the Pirak Rakit. All right? In which that becomes Bena Arakhen, which becomes Menelik. That's where that corruption comes from. Once again, from off the walls of ancient Egypt, from the Metaneta, particular high eclectics. Allah, um, which is another fictional character in a sense, is one of the names of Ra, Ra Ur, or Ur Ra. Or Ra means Ra, the Great One. 
okay? The R's and the L's once again are interchangeable in the um intercomatic language. Or Tamarain language. All right? And this and a lot symbolizes the soul. Once again, a saw a set and hero, which symbolizes Solomon, Rishi, um, um, Shiva, excuse me, and Menelik symbolizes three aspects of Yantian, as well as also the Kundalini energy, which is Oset or Shiva, going to awaken Solomon, the wise one, or saw, to the kingship, which is Menelik, which is Hiru. That's what that symbolizes. So those three particular chakras symbolizes that. Muhammad, another fictional character, um, symbolizes and comes from, like we said before, um, Happy. All right? Happy, um, who's the now river god in Kemet. And um, he's the masculine spirit that operates through the body of the river of water. Of course, um, the Nile River is the longest river in the world, so um, it was based on Hap or Happy. So the deity Happy was recognized in his twin aspect. And so as Hap flows through the southern part of the country, it's called Hap Reset, meaning Happy of the South. And as Hap flowed through the northern part of the country, it's called Hap Mat. Hap Mat, meaning Hap of the North. All right? And the water is called Mu. So you add Mu to Hap Mat, Muhammad. A title of Hap, meaning waters. Or the move of the um of the northern um now. This is the ancient title of Hap. Used for thousands of years before the um um bothered people of Kippur. Thus, um um the title Muhammad is corruption because it tells you that Ahmed Ibn um um Abdullah Al Amin Mustafa, which was so called Prophet Muhammad's name, he went into Ethiopia and after he left Ethi- um and during the time of Ethiopia and afterwards he changed his name from Ahmed to Muhammad. So he learned about Muhammad, um, about this ancient happy deity from the Ethiopian slash Egyptian ancestry in which that he had, according to the Hadith, which of course are words of men, so we can't say if he if he um existed or not. Of course, you know, someone will perpetuate perpetuate the myth that he did and and of course, you know, used um you know, stories in order to convey the same message, but I remember telling um, Rabbi Ali Muhammad that the many stories that you have in order to try to prove to me that Muhammad existed, I had just as many stories in order to prove to you that Jesus existed, but yet you say Jesus didn't exist. So this is the key in the science of all of this, is that these stories were utilized by different cultures of the same people, traditions of the same people. However, um, when it came to being put into book form, um, these particular bloodlines took these stories, like you said last week, like like we looked at Orias Pisos or Pisos, how he was related to the Ptolemies of ancient Egypt, who's the last ruler before the decline and the fall of um, of Egypt, um, the Ptolemies. Um, he related to them, and he took the stories that was on the walls of ancient Egypt and parlayed them into a play, and he took the play and he formed the New Testament into it, all right, based off the information that he had from the Old Testament, which was plagiarized or borrowed, as we would say, from um, from the same sources, all right? So this is why um, we're going to get into, get back to that in a minute, but that's the story which that we're talking about. So we find that um, when you look at Muhammad, which is corruption, the word Muhammad, um, and it says that Muhammad bought which is happy, bought um, Serem. He brought Serem to the people. So the word Serem, S-A-R-E-M, the word Sa means shrine or sanctuary of God or goddess. Rem means the tear or Ra. So Serem is the title of happy or hap, meaning the river. Hap is the shrine or sanctuary of the divine tear of Ra. All right, and in this aspect, on Ra's feminine aspect is Aset, or Sapatit, which is the star constellation Sirius. This is the reason why the Dogon say that we come from the star constellation Sirius. And in, in their mythology, 
they say that we come to start confirmation serious. Right? There's no coincidence um, that Sirius is the brightest star in the sky outside of the brightest object in the sky, which is the planet Venus. All right? It's even brighter than the North Star. So this type of Sarim was corrupted into Salem, which become Islam. So when it says that Muhammad brought Islam to the people, you're talking about happy bringing the waters of life to the divine sanctuary or shrine. All right? This is what this is talking about. But because people don't want to do research and study, you get caught up in the, in the fiction. So here, um, Balao, another fictional character, and it's none other than the ancient god Baal, or Bel. All right? And Bel is a form of sex. He's called Bar, a bar ur. And the word bar um, within Aramaic means son of. All right, so it's bar ur, bar the great, becomes bar ul, and bar ul becomes balal. All right? Which, once again, is a form of set. Some of the pre dynastic form of set when the Tasset, um, the Tassetians, and it was the Tarnessians, um, acknowledged. All right. Then of course we have Jacob, um, another fictional character, in which that um actually is from the god Kunun. And is shown as the red, um as the ram headed deity fashioned who's the souls of the person on the potter's wheel. Right, this is where you also see the picture of um, what becomes Adam and Eve being formed on the potter's wheel. And of course, you know, when a pot is at his um potter's wheel, he's using clay. So hence they say that man was made out of clay or water and dust of the ground, or in the Quran, black mud. The black mud symbolizes uh, melanin or carbon. And, of course, when you analyze melanin, it's carbon. It is carbon. All right? Um, without, with this information, we're going to shine. You know what I mean? All right, so we're going to get right back into the discussion. I think we have one caller. Um, on the line right now to have some questions, so I'm going to try to get to them. Area code 813, you're on the line. Hey, peace, brother. This is Brother Mike I. L., man, D.C. area. Peace, peace. How you doing? What's going on with you, champ, man? I, I, I commend you, brother. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you're doing that. you on that path. That's a beautiful thing. Uh, and uh, last okay. week, I missed your show last week, but I heard right, in the archives, awesome. Man, I right. think that was like your most powerful show last week. Oh, yeah. 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 And and and, I, and you should know more than anything about this Heru energy because you the Aries, you the head. Oh yeah. And if well, you, and if you, and if you really break it, I'm saying if you really break it down because on that date because you know that's uh, actually the beginning of the you know the galactic year. Uh, uh what's that? Three twenty one. 2013, I mean 2012. Actually, that's 333. That's nine. That's born. I think that yeah. is the actual date that it's going to start. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As far as this, as far as that energy. And um, and a, a brother was asking me the other day. He's like, man, what's up with that 144,000? What's up with the 144,000? And you know, as soon as I ask the question, I go to bed. Boom, and I get the answer. This is that 144,000. Um, right. as far as the chakra system. As far as the root chakra, mm-hmm. you know, that's the Mola Hora. I'm not even going to, you know, chew the words up. So I'm just going to say root chakra, mm-hmm. sacral. Mm-hmm. Correct. There you go. The root chakra is four. Sacral is six. The mm-hmm. solar plexus, I mean, uh, yeah, is, is ten. The heart is twelve. The throat is sixteen. Uh, the third eye is uh, ninety-six. You add those together, that's one forty-four. And you know the crown is the third. So you most flat that's the hundred and forty four thousand. So it goes right back to what you all every show you always say the same thing. Y'all right. niggas yeah. got to breathe. Right, right. That's that because that's that hundred and forty four thousand. Right, right. Well we just finished playing the song Shine, Shine, Shine by my man, um, you know, basically by my man um Feral Much. And so, um do the breath you make your body shine. In other words, you light up those chakras or those or those seven churches. And whenever you deal with that, you know, um, you bring forth um, a certain amount of enlightenment and certain and different states of consciousness. The higher you rise within your chakra system, 
um, the more you expand your mind, the more you're able to tap into um, those aspects of the universe in which that um, you was questioning before, but like you just did, now you have the answers. So when you go to sleep, you can have the answers because you're able to tap into the Akashic records. You're able to tap into that universal library now. That's right. And I, and I want to clarify because I just don't want to throw numbers out there and people say, okay, now what the hell does he mean by, you know, March 21st and, you know, what that, what that mean? That's going to be the start. That is the start. That is the, 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 the time when the sun is out the longest. Right. You know, the sun is at its peak. And then, you know what I'm saying, from there. And that's why I say that's the start. of it. That's the beginning of the new year. Not the first of the, you know, January 1st. That's we're going in the calendar. Everything is still dead. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's still in the winter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's what, yeah. But then when I add the numbers, I'm like, damn, that's nine. Nine is born. So I'm like, right. okay, okay. Yeah. And then going back yeah. to, and and going back to. Oh, go ahead. Um, no, 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 please. please. Yeah, I was getting ready to say, the Kabbalistic text 144 um, means illuminated ones. You know what I'm saying? It means light bearers, a light. So it goes right back to that same shine aspect once again, the illuminated one. That's right. And um, see, I, I want to, because this is how I am, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I can hear things, uh, I, I can move with things, I can feel things, but, you know, a lot of people get lost because, you know, when people just spit numbers out there, they, they can't put it, they can't connect it to themselves. So as right. far as, like, when you were um, calling out the great year, the, you know, the 25,920 or the 24,000, which is the um, the great right. year, um, they, they can multiply, you know, they can do it themselves. Like, when you're shooting dice, you got four corners. That's 90 degrees. Four times 90 is 360. That's 360 degrees right there. Then you times that six because you got six corners, which is the, the um, you know, that's, that's the so-called Yahshua on the cross. That's six. That's that, that's that cube. So you both have to multiply that by the, the 300, and, I mean, 360 by the six, and that's two, 2,160. And someone else was telling me the other day that that number, 2,000, well, actually, it might have been something more than that. 2,160 pertains to that. The axis, the, the earth is on its axis, and when it takes that, that complete spin or something like that, I, I don't, I don't want to, you know, say because I, I don't have the, 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 the complete um, dissertation on it, so, I'm, you know, I'm just throwing the numbers out there for a second. But let me let me finish this one in. And then you times that by the 12, that's the constellation. 12 constellations, that's uh, 2,160 times 12, that's 5,920. Well, you know, you can slash right. that by the twenty uh, twenty four thousand the great year. So you you know, you can put yourself That's right. That's right. Right, twenty five thousand nine hundred and twenty. That's exactly right, you Listen to the brother, he's on it. Yeah, but I'm I'm just saying we can do it it's not about somebody listening to you all the time. It's not about somebody listening to me. We gotta get this shit ourselves because we we're gonna be lost out here if you can't connect it. It's beautiful that I can call I, I can sit here and listen to you. Because, you know right. We gotta appreciate this, and with that love, you know what's, what's that love, John? That's three, three ninety six. That's love, the vibration, the frequency, right? The hertz, something like that. Oh, five twenty eight. Five twenty eight. Five twenty eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's love. Yeah, that's love. Yep. You gotta get on these vibrations, man. Um, and actually, I got some some dates. You know, it, it'll be in the archive so they can, um, you know, listen to it. Because um, I, I hear a lot of people getting enthralled about, you know, the quote unquote illuminated ones. Um, well, you know, the so-called Illuminati and the, um, you know, the stuff they did as far as the Super Bowl, the stuff they was doing as far as, um, You're right, the stuff they was doing as far as uh, um, our, our, our sister, our beloved sister, just passed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but hold on, my phone is about to go dead, so I gotta put this. Hold, hold on, one second, I put this cord in here. Hold on, one second. Yeah, my phone was about to go dead. Um, yeah, and even if they, yeah, even if they did have something to do with it, or if they didn't, I, I don't know. You know, what I'm saying I, I don't do the S the the CIS. You know, astrolog- astrological. You know, the breakdown. I, can't, I you know, I don't, I don't do that. So I, I don't know if she did it. They did it or not. But I, I just know this: you can ride off that energy because these jokers got certain dates. Actually, it's not even their dates. These are these are uh, universal dates. You got December the thirty first. I mean, the twenty first. That's the Yule, and that's the winter solstice. 
And you got uh, February the 1st, that's M, 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 M Bulk. Actually, that's what they wrote on right there with the M Bulk, uh, with the Valentine's Day, and also, you know, with, 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 for her death and all that, too. And you got March 21st. That's the energy that I'm saying that we're going to ride on right here. Because they're going to do something big on the, uh, the 31st. That's when they always fight the wars and stuff like that. You know, um, Aries is always a good war time. Cause that's probably when they try to go uh, kick off that World War III bullshit. But as long as you know this stuff, it's not, it's not for fear. It's for information, to be informative. Um, the, uh, March 21st, that's uh, Ostara. Ostara, and that's the spring equinox. And also you got, you know, April Fool's around that time. And then you got May the 1st, that's uh, Bob Beltane. And you got May Day. Um, June 20, 21st, you got uh, Lissa, that's the summer solstice, uh, and also, you know, Independence Day. Um, August the 1st, uh, Lug, Nasada, something like that. You know, y'all, y'all can break it down. Um, September the 20th, the 21st, you got May, Maybong, and that's, um, you know, the autumn. And then you got October 31st, that's um, Sam Hain. They ride off of these dates, so if they ride off it, you can ride off of it. Get this energy, man. Get Stop being afraid of this shit. Get this energy. And I love the way you breaking down all them little bullshit-ass myths. Break it down, oh, man. Okay. All right, thanks, bro. I, pre- I appreciate you, love. My love, man. I appreciate you. No, 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 much love, God. All right, we got another caller. All right, somehow they blinked out. Hopefully they'll come back on. But anyway, um, let's get back into um, the information. Um, we were talking about also about the Quran and the original source of the Quran. Um, we know, um, as we said, um, 73% of it comes from the Old and New Testament. Another 27% comes from the Zoroastrian text called the Advin Adveda, Advista, as well as also um, in the Lord's Book of the Bible, the God Books of Eden, and the Apocrypha. Now, the Quran even states this because the Holy Quran also means sun cycle, right? Holy means sun, Quran, which chronological means cycle of time. So the Holy Quran is a sun book, just like the Bible is, symbolized the sun cycle. This is why a lot of the chapters um, deals with the stars, all right, and the heavens, such as, such as like we said, Najim, the 53rd um, surah is called Najim, which means the star. All right, there's one, there's a chapter in there for the twelve zodiac signs. The moon, El Kamar. Right? The um sun, El Shem. Alright, so um they deal with the so when anyone say that um Islam don't deal with um astronomy or astrology, that's a lie. The book is based on it. As above, so we know as what that's so without. Now if you go to the Holy Quran, the twenty fifth surah in the fifth ayat, it says, And they say Tells of the ancient, which he has caused to be written, and they are dictated before him morning and evening. So the tales of the ancient, it tells you where the Quran comes from, from the tales of the ancient. All right, you go to the Holy Quran, um, Surah um, Shuara, which is the poet, which is the um, 26 Surah and 196 Ayat, which is um, the word Surah means chapter, Ayat means verse. Um, and it reads, Wa Ennahu, Lafi, Zu, Buri, Al, Al Wa which means, without doubt, it is announced in the mystic books of the former peoples. That's what it means, in the mystic books of the former peoples. So who was before the Quran? Oh, the Christians with the Old with New Testament, or oh, before them the Jews with the Old Testament, and even before them, um, the tells of the ancients, which is the ancient Egyptian. The tells of the mystery school. Now, when you look up the word mystic, it says mysteries that transcend ordinary human knowledge. It involves or characterized by esoteric or otherworldly or symbolic practice or content at certain religious ceremonies and art. It um, signif- um significate ethereal or of the nature of pertaining to mysteries known only to the initiate, mystic rites of occult character, power, or significance, a mystic formula, or obscure or mysterious character or uh, significance, or of 
or of or pertaining to mystics or mysticism. So it's basically he's talking about I'm a mystic is the person who claims to obtain or believe in the possibilities of attaining insight into mysteries transcending ordinary human knowledge as by direct communication with the divine or immediate intuition in a state of spiritual ecstasy. A person initiated into the religious mystery. So when it says, so what are the mystic books of the former people that the Quran is referring to? Well, um, you go to the Holy Quran, the 43rd um, surah in the fourth ayat. It says the mother of the books, which is Al-Huma, Al-Kitab. It says the foundation of the revelation, the preserved tablets, is the core or essence of revelation. The mother of the book is in Allah's own presence. This is what it says. All right? Now, and I just want to say that because there's a lot of lost books in the um, Bible that you might not know about, so I'm going to go over them, you know, before we get back to question and answers. But you have the Book of the Covenant, which is spoken of within Exodus, the 24th chapter, the 7th verse. The Book of Wars of the Lord, Numbers 21, 14. You have the book of Yasher, which is in Joshua, the 10th chapter, the 13th verse. And 2 Samuel, the 1st chapter, the 18th verse. You have the manna of the kingdom, which is the book of statues, which is 1 Samuel 10, 25. You have the book of Samuel, the seer, which is 1 Chronicles 29, 29. You have Nathaniel, the um, prophet, 1 Chronicles 29, 29. 2 Chronicles 9, 29. You have the Acts of Solomon. 1 Kings 11.41, you have the prophecy of um, Abijah, which is 2 Chronicles 9.29, the story of Prophet Edo, which is 2 Chronicles 13.22, you have the vision of Edo, the seer, 2 Chronicles 9.29, you have the Edo's chronology, chronological, um, genealogy, which is 2 Chronicles 12.15, you have um, Shemaiah, the prophet, Second Chronicles twelve fifteen. You have the Acts of Roh um Roho Boam, Roho Boam, which is Second Chronicles twelve fifteen. You have the book of Juhu, which is Second Chronicles twenty thirty four. You have the Acts of Jehoshaphat, which is Second Chronicles twenty thirty four. You have the sayings of Seir, Second Chronicles thirty three nineteen. You have the book of Gad, the Seer. First Chronicles twenty nine twenty nine. You have the prophecies of Enoch, Jude one fourteen. You have the epistles or letters of Corinth, which is First Corinthians five nine. You have the epistles to um, Ephesians, which is Ephesians three three. You have the epistles um, from Yahudicia to the um, Colossians, which is Colossians four. 16. You have the Nazarene prophecy source, which is Matthew 2.23. You have the Acts of um, Usia, which is Second Chronicles 26.22. You have the Annals of King David, First Chronicles 27.24. And you have Jude, the missing epistle, which is Jude 1.3. So these are the books that the Bible speaks about, but there is no copies of these books. They're not in your Apocrypha. They're not in your Lord's Books of the Bible, um, Forgotten Books of Eden. All right? So, where are these books at? That's the question. One of the books has been found, which is called the Book of Yasher, in which that the Pope has. So that means that a lot of these books are um, locked up um, in the Vatican, and we know that about a mile, um, about, um, about a, um, in the Vatican, has underground um, about a mile long um, library of scrolls, over 200,000 scrolls, which have been salvaged from out of the Alexandria Library out of 700,000. 200,000 uh, was salvaged, supposedly, from during the time of the burning, and they was confiscated and they was taken to Rome. All right, then, of course, we know that there's other books. So they have these particular books, and um, it's guarded by um, it's guarded by um, 
by guards uh, behind the steel doors, you know, um, to get to this library. A um, portion of it was shown to you on um, on Demons and Angels uh, with Tom Hanks, or Angels and Demons, or whatever the name of it was. All right, so um, so we know that um, so you have the Apocrypha, you have the Lord's Books of the Bible, the Scout Books of Eden, you have the Dead Sea Scrolls, you have the Book of Mormons, the Popova, um, the Chalim, the Lamb, um, the Codes, the Lords of Havarabi, the Tao of Teaching, the I Ching, Five Baskets of Buddha Zen, or uh, Zen Buddha, um, the Bahavad Gita, the Hispanishad, the Bahavaraka, the Bahavarata, the um, Vedas, or the Rig Veda, um, the Bible, the Quran, the Ra Papyrus, as we call it, the Book of Rising Like Ra, includes the um, Hushia, which is the oldest book, one of the oldest books, um, the Opening Up the Mouth Ceremony by Day and Night, on the Purim Hiru, um, so text, um, as well as also the Book of Rising and Transformation, the Kometan Mir, or Pyramid Papyrus, as well as the um, Egyptian coffin text, as they refer to it, also the Greenfield um, papyrus. Um, you have the Inuvi Elitch, the Epic of Gilgamesh, the tablets of Nagal and Arishagal. You have the tablets of Adap, which, of course, is Enoch. You have the tablet of Etana, which is Elijah. You have the tablets of the descent of Ishtar to the underworld, which is um, Isis or Esther within the Old Testament, and Easter within the Passover during the time um, as a star, as the brother was talking about earlier on the last caller. So these are particular books, and history has so many missing pages. Um, the Temple of um, Ptah's Library in Memphis was completely destroyed. The Paragamas Library in um, Asia Minor was totally demolished, and it contained over 200,000 volumes. Um, in a 17-day um, fire, the city of um, Carthage, Rome was burnt to the ground, along with um, its 500,000 volumes. However, the known greatest loss was the burning of Alexandria Library, um, during which 700,000 priceless scrolls were supposedly consumed. Like I said, 200,000 of them was uh, found their way within the Vatican. All right? Um, in the um, Barak, um, the Barakat, um, the Druid College, as it was um as it, um as what it is now um Utan in France, thousands of scrolls perished there. Right? Um that was um in the capital. Um and that was part of the school of the capital which is Bar Aset or Bar Isis, which you come to work Paris. Right. Um the school of thought was linked to the ancient temple of Bar Aset, all right? Um which is of course when it's meant to spirit or the soul of our sect was symbolized that they were astrologers and they um, um, did work with the Star Constellation series. All right? Um, you had Emperor Tassim Shi um, Hawan. Um, Hawan um, issued an edict um, whereby numerous books were burnt in China in the 213 BCE. All right? In the 8th century, Leo um, Isaurus destroyed 300,000 books. The number of manuscripts lost or and burnt during the Inquisitions and during the Crusades can hardly be estimated. Right? According to the story of the Moors of Spain by Stanley Poole, he, said, um, he states that the first so-called civilized Europeans were the Greeks who chiefly civilized, who were chiefly civilized by the Africans of the Nile Valley. The Greeks transmitted this culture to the Romans who finally lost it. Um, being in the dark age of 500 years, and of course we know the Moors came back and civilized them. Once that civilization, civilization was restored to the, um, Europe um, um, with another group of Africans, the Moors, who brought them from out of the dark age. Um, all right, and of course the Moors acquired knowledge from around the world. So they even ransacked and reports that one Moorish king had an incredible private library of 600,000 books. 600,000 books. Even so, it has been manuscripts and etc. Um, which, if all the manuscript scrolls were spread out, that would extend over 13 um, miles, right? In the um, basement of the Vatican, as I was saying earlier, where the library is located, a guard is placed outside 
in front of a heavy steel door to protect the stolen treasures. All right? Now, you have um, Al Hassan um, Muhammad Al um, Fasi, um, who was a Moor, and within um, many names, um, such as um, he was also known as Leo Africanus. All right? And um, in his book, it says the history and the description of Africa and the notable things contained therein. He said that at Timbuktu are a great store of doctors, judges, priests, and other learned men, and hither are brought um, diverse manuscripts or written books out of the North Africa, which was sold for more money than any other merchandise. All right. Then you got the um, um, San Corey um, scholars who had um, great libraries containing thousands of books, bringing them with their astro- um, astro-theological legends and metaphysical teachings dating back before 3200 BCE, right? Um, of course, you get this information from the Golden Ages of the Moor by Ivan von Sertima. And he writes that many of the written um, records left by the Olmecs in the in um, South America was systematically destroyed by the European discoverers of the New World. The very people who burnt down the library of the African Moors in Spain were the same people who destroyed the written um, records of the Olmec civilization. All right? So, um, he said we found a large number of books. They contained but mis- superstition. We burnt them all, which they regretted to a, an amazing degree. This is what was said by the um, Spanish bishop of the Yucatan, um, Diago de um, Leanda. All right? And he says that they were burnt, and we must, and um, which caused them much affliction. You know what I'm saying? Antonius de um, Cudan Real, the Spanish historian, also um, affirmed that in 1588 AD that the Spanish Burnt many historical books of the ancient Yucatan, which told of its beginning in history. Therefore, we now have to depend on our African ancestral data bank or memory bank, as Ashwa Kwesi speak about, and the leftover disconnected book fragments to fill in the void. So this book, um, so my, my book in particular and others, um, you know, have been basically written to help in the process of piecing this puzzle back together. So this is um, a lot of the information. 302, you're on the line. Peace, peace. peace. What's going on, on, Ali? This is Brother Messiah. All right. Yeah, I just wanted to to ask you about the seven chakras. Um, Yes. I've heard that there are 12 corresponding 12 planets as well. Well, well, we're going to go to the Book of Revelation. Check this out. Go to the book of Revelation and read from the first chapter to the to the twelfth chapter. There is only to speak of the seven, but by the time you get to the twelfth chapter, um, it moves from um, seven stars, in which that um, was on the right hand um, side of the Son of Man, or the, in the hand of the Son of Man, um, to twelve stars above the head of the woman. So it went from seven stars to twelve stars. So yes, we are graduating from the seven. Um, chakra system, nine chakra system to a 12 chakra system. You know, but shit, niggas ain't got seven correct yet. So, you know, um, we got to make sure that they get um, the seven correct first, then they can move to the nine and then to the 12. Oh, all right, all right. All right, and these organs are going to be reinstilled or reinstated through their genetic structure back into their body. Like, for example, Dr. York speak about the Batherian gland or Batherian gland, which that was taken from out the hypocampus area and now put within the submental region of the chin, lower chin area, um, above the neck and um, behind the chin area. Um, there's like a um, like a ball area. You feel like a little ball or two balls um, areas up under the chin. That is the Batherian um, gland. And then um, Dr. Um, Derby Blair speaks about another gland in which that sits at the roof of the mouth called the epiphany gland. And so those two glands um, would give the person a nine gland um, or nine chakra system. However, um, you have to see if you have those particular glands. I can't tell you if you do, but I know that if you're able to hear this message 
same information, then more than likely you do, and they, um, and those glands are reappearing within um, your being um, as we speak. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole point of um, teachers is to activate the memory codes in your DNA. That's the reason why you have to hear so much speak because it's power in the words. Um, the word made flesh. So by you hearing someone speak a particular tone and information and knowledge or frequency, it reactivates these particular glands in your body in order to help you with this transition in anything in time. Uh, okay. All right. Now, one more question in, in, in regards to what you just said. Um, mm-hmm. Now, the 33 degrees of Scottish Rite Freemasonry or the European order. Right. Are they, um, do they, do they give off vibrations which, uh, you know, will align, will, 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 uh, activate these 33, um, energy centers within your vertebrae? Right. Well, there's 33 vertebrates, right? So, um, each step of, or each vertebrate symbolizes a step or a degree of Freemasonry, which comes up to 33. Each one also symbolizes the years in which that um, Jesus existed, you know, in human form, which is actually talking about you, the breath of life is what brought the physical body in human form. Yahshua, which is the breath of life, brought the physical body into human form. The, um, um, the soul is activated at, um, when the child first takes his, um, at the child's first breath. When the doctor spanked the child on his ass, um, the first breath, is what activates the soul within each and every one of us. So hence, God breathed into the nostrils of man to make man a living soul. So um, through the breath is what activates those particular um, chakras along the 33 um, depths or degrees or vertebrates, in which that is called the jijid or the backbone of Osiris. And the word jijid is where the word Jedi comes from in Star Wars that George Lucas was dealing with because he is the Rosicrucian and occultist. And um, the word Jedi, hence each Jedi had a particular lifesaver in which that symbolized the various colors or spectrums of the visible spectrum or, um, or the rainbow colors from Roy G. Bear, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And if you notice who had the highest one, uh, which was violet, and that was Samuel Jackson. All right. George Lucas, he was a Rosicrucian. Yeah, he's a Rosicrucian and a cultist, yes. So he knew all this information back in the 70s, being a um, um, a student of Egyptology or Kemetology. Yeah, uh, well, you can could, you could definitely see it. In the, you can see a reflection of that in the movies. Right, exactly. Exactly. A lot of... A lot of... Um, a lot of movie producers, uh, not just him, uh, what's the guy, oh. Michael Bay. Right. All of them are Masons or either Rosicrucians or you know, some type of other occult school such as Astaria, the Golden Dawn, or the AT, or the OTO, or um, the AA, or, you know, different branches of the Rosicrucians, you know, Theosophical Society, you know, whatever the case may be. All of that is more science. All of that is the ancient uh, mysteries called the Hakka or the Herbach teachings, which are the teachings of light. Okay. For the Messiah? Okay. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's peace, Lord. All right, no doubt, Lord. All right, we're going to go to the next caller. 347 is the area code. 347 area code. You on the line. Peace. Peace, Ali. This is Brother Kyle. How you doing? Peace, God. How you doing? Ma'am, um, what was the name of that KRS-One track you just dropped, man? That was on and popping. That's called a Tekakow. The Tekakow? Yeah, a Tekakow. A-Z-T-E-C-N-I-C-A-L. A Tekakow. Oh, a Tekakow. Okay. Right. Yeah, man, he he, he was dropping some, a, a, a lot of truth in there, man. A lot of people won't know what, what that man's talking about, though, man. <laughs> oh, I know. And the fact that this thing, and we just finished building with um, As Above, So Below, As Within, So Without, and we done with astrology and the Quran being 25,000 years in of history, I thought that was appropriate being that we in 2012, and that's what he was building on. 
Yeah, that's what's up, man. Good show, though, man. Word. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, always, always. I'm going to bring you the truth and the facts, and no one can run from it. They're going to have to come in hard battling against this here. All right. Thank you, brother. <laughs> All right. Peace. All right. Peace. We got area code 408. Area code 408. You on the air. Peace, brother Arlene. Peace, Zach. How you doing? I'm good, brother. I'm calling from Cali right now. And uh, I had a question. Of, you know, with, you know you're know, you talking about religion, right? And it right. seems that symbolism, which can be tricky, plays, you know, part of religion. And I wanted to find out um, for the first, I mean, you know, somebody can explain to me because I've seen it and I don't understand it. The baphomet symbol, is that part of a religion? Is that a progressive or recessive? And where did it come from? And, I mean, I'm, I'm still trying to understand it. Or does it have well, anything actually, to do with, with religion? You know, actually, the Baphomet symbol we always uh, drawn, the one that they always show us, was drawn by Elias Levi, who was um, um, the head of Rosicrucian. And, actually, Elias Levi came down off the throne as being the head of Rosicrucian and passed the throne over to a moor by the name of Pastel Beverly Randolph. All right. Okay. Um, it was back in 1858, you know what I'm saying, when this occurred. And so, um, you know, uh, well, I guess it was around, around in the 80s or going into the 60s, somewhere around you know, around that time period. And it was passed on to him, you know, as a way of um, saying that, you know, this ancient Moorish information or the ancient mystery schools, which called the Moors, were the guardians of the teachers of the ancient mystery um, and they passed it back on to us. That was the, that was the symbology. If you go and read up on Pastel Beverly Randolph, you'll find out that his best friend was Abraham Lincoln. You know what I'm saying? He was also, you know what I'm saying? Um, so um, when you go and do your research, you find out all these intimate connections, you know, as well as also Madame Babaski was his student, you know what I'm saying? And, of course, Madame Babaski was who sparked um, Adolf Hitler, um, Rudolf Steiner, as well as also Alice Crawley also. All right. Crawley uh, was also a student of Bev- Beverly Pastor Randolph and, and his sex magic or tantric Kriya yoga um, information, or tantric um, um, information, okay? Right, right. Well, that, that was the only question I had. I want to keep you any longer, but uh, I appreciate you uh, giving me some insight on it. And, uh, yeah, I feel a little more relieved. <laughs> right. Well, there's more. There's more. Like, for example, um, the Baphomet symbol originally was the symbol of the perfect man, in which that was the um, symbol of the Moors. Um, the word Baphomet actually becomes the word um, Muhammad, as, I, um, as we were talking about earlier. It was an Islamic um, um, symbol in which that the gold, of course, comes from, the symbol gold comes from Capricorn, you know what I'm saying? And Capricorn, of course, is the astrological um, for the 11th month, no, um, but no, for the 10th month, you know what I'm saying, of the Zodiac. So um, Capricorn symbolizes organization, you know, and there was money and finances, you know, um, and management, you know, um, here on the physical plane, and also the um, planet on which that, um, um, is ruled by um, Capricorn is Saturn. It's the word origin of the word Satan, also from the word set. You know, so this is also where all of this comes from. You know, so um, so it's actually the symbol of the perfect man. And if you notice um, at the base um, chakra going up to the first and second chakra, you see the raising or the rising of the Kundalini energy. All right, in, a, in this elliptical pad going up the sp- um, up the um, spinal column, um, it starts at the second chakra because most men has not perfected themselves beyond those two seats of lust and greed. Mm-hmm. That's what that was symbolic to. So for those who promote that symbol, they are simply saying that they are stuck at the lust and greed so, um, 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 at the lust and greed area of the body, which is the genitalia and the navel chakra. Mm-hmm. And that, is, and that is something in which that they are still working on and trying to master, which most of them, being that they are stuck at it, don't never master it. 
and right. they don't know the science of how to do a microcosmic orbit or a macrocosmic orbit, how to use the breath and the visualization in order to raise the kutalini up the spine and back down, so up and down the body in order to rejuvenate it. So, I mean, these are things that they don't know, you know, and that's why we're here, to teach them. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to continue doing our job. Indeed, it's a, it's a lovely one, too. I appreciate it, brother. All right. appreciate you, brother, for calling in. Let's go to the next caller. Next caller is 708, area code 708. Hey, what's up, brother? How you doing? B, B. This is Sinjadicata. Hello? Yes, yes. Hey, how you doing, bro? Hey, I wanted to ask you a quick question. Now, is more science, um, I, 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 I was reading the Circle 7 Quran, is it the same as uh, Sufism? Because it seems like Noble Jali was dealing with a Sufistic type of Islam. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sufism, let me, let me explain. Sufism is the origin of the Rosicrucian information, so mm-hmm. that's more science. More, the more science of Sufism is what formed the Rosicrucian, as well in the Rosicrucian form, the Masonry. So mm-hmm. it is all the same science coming from different aspects, but it all comes from the ancient teachings of Egypt. And like we said, the Moors are the guardians of that information, and the Moors are, who, are, are the ones who form Sufism. And the word Suf or Sof means wisdom. And mm-hmm. so also it means woolly hair. And so who has a woolly hair? There's only one race of people on the planet that has woolly hair. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So who else could they have come from if the word Suf of self means woolly head ones. Mm-hmm. Now, now when he talks about means wisdom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, when he talked about those Turks, who, who, what type right. of Turks were he, were he, was he talking about? Like, was he talking the about the original Turks? Uh, the original okay. Turks. The original Turks. If you read Sex and Race by J. E. Rogers, um, he tells you right write that down. That the say Turks were right. That the original race. Moors were the Turks, or the original or black or the original people of that area were blacks. And it's called sex and now, race. We're talking about the amalgamated people that come in later who claim their on their Arab um, heritage from Ishmael and all that. All that shit is fictitious, as we broke down tonight. Absolutely. We're talking about the original people of that land were Kushites. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stemming from out of Arabia, um, 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 all the way into India, called the Indo Kush, and within all those regions is where um, we um, propagated that. So Iran, Iraq, um, Kuwait, um, Syria. Uh, Turkey, you know what I'm saying? All that used to be black land, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so that's, that's the point of um, um, J.E. Rogers, Sex and Race, and um, Nature know, Knows No Color Line. Hmm. Sex is called Sex and Race? Right, Sex and Race, Okay. Volume 1 by J.E. Rogers. Also get the book, What They Never Told, uh, what they never told You in History Class by Indo Kemet Kush. Absolutely. So do you under, do you know why Noble Jolly? Why didn't he call the people black? What did, what did he meant by more? But he never used the word black. Was it just for that time? That's why no, he says that. What happens is that the word black um, is an adjective, so it describes the thing, and he wanted to be in proper person, or what's called proper person, um, um, proper person persona juris, or proper persona juris, which mm-hmm. means to be in our proper um, status or in our proper self. And so the word more is a proper noun. So it don't mm. describe the thing. It is it. So the word more was more um, um, meaningful as far as um, saying who we are. You get cultural genocide by um, by Dr. Ben Yakinen or Dr. Ben. He states in there that the word more, as well as the many other names in, there in which that we have gone by, was one was some of the most honorable names that we have had throughout history. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so um, it's just a name in which that we had through our history. Like I said earlier, that the word Moor, um, the word Moors or the Maroos, um, they were the high priests of Ra. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, or Amin Ra, mm-hmm. or which is form of Ra, which becomes Allah, which is Allah. Right, right. So yes, this sir, is how brother. all of this comes into existence, and um, here's the reason why uh, we acknowledge um, Islam, like we said, that Muhammad, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. the form of happy is what brought Salem, um, or Salem, or Islam to the people, or to humanity. Yeah, so that's absolutely. what all that symbolizes. It's, it's, it's coded, and, um, and it's, like I said earlier, it's meant for those who are rooted deeply within knowledge, or firmly within knowledge, to be coded. Because you're only going to be coded by the will of Allah opening your eye, which is your third eye. 
and when your one eye becomes single, then your whole body will be filled with light. Matthew, the mm. chapter 22nd um, verse. So Absolutely. you have to um, have that one eye open, or what's called the third eye, or first eye, or all eye seeing, or all seeing eye. Yes, sir. We ain't, you know, we ain't talking about the shit. Oh, man. <laughs> That's on the back of the dollar bill. Oh, wow. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? Oh, right on. Oh, I don't know. It's the Illuminati symbol. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's the Illuminati. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I ain't got time for that retard, the retarded shit. You yes, know what I'm saying? You got to teach the You sir. know what I'm saying? Sir. You know, before we can move into this next age, you know what I'm saying, live, you know, um, unlike what is happening now, you know, through a lot of, um, you know, um, death was that is taking place around us. We got to um, make sure that we um, exist through this next um, chain of, um, of cycles here going to this next 25,000 renewal of history so that we can make sure that we manifest what we want into reality and not the Albion because he's been manifesting um, um, now for at least the last few thousand years and it's time to knock his ass off that throne. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hey, I was doing a Hindu meter chart with my with, um, with the Zagis in Hinduism and um, the next um, destructive situation that you might see um, within this year, possibly, is something with Michael Jordan. His name came up. Right. So, just wanted to bring it up because we already did, we discovered um, Whitney Houston two years ago, but we didn't know it was going to come like this. So I just right. wanted, you know, it's a lot of stuff going on. So I, you know, that's just a possibility. Got you. No doubt. Yes, sir, brother. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I thank you. Please. All right, um, we got some um, information that's going on in the chat room. You know what I'm saying? Yassi, you know what I'm saying, um, is stating that there's over 3,000 energy centers in the body. Seven is the most important of these, um, you know what I'm saying? And the soul is nothing more but the process, which is the inhalation and the exhalation, which is the breath. The breath is the soul, y'all. And what happens when you stop breathing? Oh, the soul goes. All right, so um, that's what it's talking about. Um, and he says, um, um, and of course, the kundalini is nothing more than your spinal fluid. Exactly. And you raise your spinal fluid up through the um, shishuna, which is the hollow area in the back from the sacral. And um, you make it predominate through you more than just 10%, um, as it normally is. The 10% normally just give you the ability in order to eat, sleep, shift, fucking go to work. You know what I'm saying? But you want to do more than just that. You want to um, you want to spiritualize those five senses into the higher senses. Seeing becomes what clairvoyance. Hearing becomes clairaudience. Touch or taste. I mean, excuse me. Touch or feeling becomes psychemistry. All right. Um, um, touch becomes um, excuse me. Taste becomes clear um, guessance. Smell becomes um, clear sentience. So you want to move beyond just eat, sleep, shit, fucking go to work. Those those five rituals that you do on a daily basis. In Islam, they got the five, which that's called um, 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 you're taking your shahada, um, Ramadan, you know, which you know, uh, which is El Salom fasting deals with um, charity. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, deals with um, El Hajj. You know, making your pilgrimage. Or your trip, you know what I'm saying? And um, so, so I mean, they have five within Islam. They call the five pillars of faith. You know what I'm saying? So you want to go beyond just limit, you know, limiting yourself to just the physical plane. And you want to be able to communicate with your ancestors, all right? Because they live within you. That's your DNA, and you have an intimate connection because you actually are a concentration of your seven generations on your mother's side and seven generations on your father's side. Hence the fourteen pieces of all saw. Which that was cut up by a set. That's what it's talking about your genealogy. This is what the Bible was based on was the genealogies. It's talking about aspects of oneself. You know what I'm saying? Um, we get caught up into anthropomorphizing these characters into physical form, thinking that um, you know now you can just call upon these um, particular aspects. All these aspects are now based on all the thoughts and the people um, have put out there into belief around them of thought forms. It's a thought form. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, now you can use a thought form. You can use these thought forms. And they can 
didn't work for you because you have put life, you have breathed life into them through your thoughts. Overstanding, thoughts travel 24 billion miles per second. Light travels 186,000 miles per second. Sound travels um, on 1,000, um, 1,000 and, well, I think it's 1,029 feet per second. All right? Um, so this is what this is talking about. So thought travels faster than light. All right? So these thought forms are what becomes your angels or your angelical beings or your celestial beings, and you manifest them um, you know what I'm saying? Good thoughts. This is why people who um claim to have miracles, such as um um a woman who might have um rolled over into a ditch and her child was in the car and she's out of the car screaming and yelling for somebody to help, a stranger comes, tear the um tear the you know, the the um door off the car and get the child out, get the child to her and she turns around and he disappears. You know what I'm saying? This is what we're talking about. You know, so um, this is the science. All right, let me see. You got any more um, callers here, questions? Um, I think we got another question. We got 313, area code 313. You're on the line. Peace, Brother Lim. Peace, Brother Lim. I love the show. All right. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. I have a, a question. Well, actually, I need some clarification. It's back on to the uh, Masonic side of it. Uh, the, the guy that called in asked me about the Baphomet deal. deal. Well, right. I had a question pertaining to the same thing. I'm looking to find out about getting uh getting your status back where it's supposed to be, taking control of your straw man in lack of a better word or saying it in a better way. Okay, my situation, I think I know that, you know, you can come in through the uh, more science temple to correct it, or you can go through uh, the Moorish Confederations, Washita, uh, da-da-da-da-da-da, but, about a month ago, I was sitting listening to a DVD by C. Freeman L., and he just more or less blurted it out. What if you just want to take control of your uh, your, your straw man? You go through the Masonic lodges, or more or less the Masonic societies, the Mason Masons, and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, it made sense because uh, our history is there. And, and all of a sudden, it came to me about. Uh, how these guys were uh, flashing all the symbols on TV, and, and you know we were always taught to run the other way from all that stuff. These guys are sold out, and this, that, and other. No, they letting you know. I'm thinking they letting you know that this is where you're supposed to be to do this. And then you start looking at how they flash symbols in the courtroom and to get out of the troubles they in, and, and all this kind of stuff. I was saying, wait a minute. So there's a third way in. So what I wanted to find out from you, because I never heard anybody say it but Steve Freeman L., and I've been waiting for somebody to actually say it, could you elaborate on it? Yeah, real simple. Um, masonry is ours. It comes from the um, ancient word of free medicine, which is the um, ancient Egyptian or comedic or Tamaranian name for one who is enlightened or woke because anointed with the um, crocodile fat of Sabak which is um, Heru, and um, we become um, free medicine um, through that anointing. Um, the word mess means a child of, all right, and actually we become a child of Ra. That's what it means, a child of the light, all right? This is why um, we become the light bringers or the light bearers, all right, which is another name for Lucifer, So, which is nothing more than the angel Uriel. Uriel is um is Lucifer and within the Yoruba tradition is Ishu Alekba. Mm-hmm. All right, and Ishu Alekba symbolizes the open of the way. Mm-hmm. All right, so I mean, what we are talking about is our ancient um, mysteries of Africa. You know what I'm saying? And we are being turned off by, um, you know, by Kabbalah 
individual, Kabbalistic individuals who um, are purposely perverting the Jews are, are, are perverting the teachings, you know, because the information actually comes from, if you read um, A.E. Wake's book called the um, Holy, Kab- Holy Kabbalah, he states in the first 25 pages that the Kabbalah comes from the teachings of the Moors from out of Spain and mm-hmm. that the libraries were raided and that this is how the Kabbalah teachings come together. So the Jews are studying our magic, our information, in which that becomes um, the Rosicrucian information, which becomes masonry. And what they're doing is perverting the teachings, as they always do, but it's still ours, and so we can take it okay. back. And that's the point well, that's of joining the ancient free Moorish right. Well, that is the, the, the free route right. into That's what I was doing. Um, I would not join Prince Hall Masonry because I'm not riding no goats. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, I'm not riding the hump. Mm-hmm. All right? So um, we want to join a masonry in which that is conducive to our Moorish heritage and our Moorish teachings. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I appreciate your help. All right. All right. Um, we get ready to get up off of here, so we get ready to um hit you with this last tune. We'll be out, and um hopefully you'll enjoy this show. And I'll come back and visit us once again next Wednesday at eight p.m. um Eastern Standard Time. Um, with the Dr. Aline um Bay show. As well as also for those who want to contact us, we have our classes going on. I'm um, getting ready to start back up our alternative healing classes, in which we teach qigong, tai chi, reiki, branding healing, um, methods of breathing, um, everything, out of body experiences such as astral travel, soul travel, um, microcosmic orbit rotations, macrocosmic orbit rotations, and everything else that we can possibly think of in which that will enhance and renew. Um, uh, waking your soul, as we would say. So, for those who's interested in the classes, hit me up at um, Healing Wings Online at Yahoo dot com. That's Healing H E A L I N G Healing Wings W I N G S Online O N L I N E at Yahoo dot com. That's Healing Wings Online at Yahoo dot com. All right, Healing Wings Online at Yahoo dot com. Go and check us out. Check out our um, website. It's www.cultural, C-U-L-T-U-R-A-L, cultural-freedom.com. So we're getting it out there. All right? So we ain't fronting. We're getting it out. So y'all support. Peace. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Burn. Proceeding others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Burn. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Burn. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Burn. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intentional.
came straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. 